So thank you very much indeed for coming to another Drupal 8 day session. We are more than halfway through now, but we have some really good sessions left towards the end of Drupal 8 day. Um, it's a, a great day to celebrate Drupal 8. It's a year since the release of the project and things are really changing, including Composer becoming a bigger part of a, a bigger part of everyone's Drupal workflow. And I'm delighted that we have Jesus Manuel to talk with us about Composer. Uh, Jesus Manuel is a, a Drupal and Symfony developer. He's the co-maintainer of the Drupal console project and he's been working with Drupal for seven or eight years now. So with no further ado, I'll hand over. Um, welcome, Jesus Manuel. Glad to have you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for actually thank you for organizing this, putting this event in together. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of effort. So thank you for doing this. And yeah, let's talk about this composer thing. You know, you hear a lot on D8, you know, what's part of the changes. It's not related to actually Drupal. It's more like a standard happening in the PHP world. And yes, we have a lot of projects are using Composer to manage dependencies for the project. And we'll see how this can apply to, to Drupal 8 workflow and development. So again, thank you. Thank you, everyone here listening to you. So the session name is Improving Your Drupal 8 Development Workflow. Actually, you can probably give a better name, something like, like this, you know, because it's no longer required. And we will see how how Composer can can do a lot of the, the work that Rushmake used to do. And I mean Rushmake is great, it's a great tool and help us for a long time, but now there is a tool that we don't have to maintain. And it's a tool that's in a standard way of working with I mean, I mean the rest of the PHP world is using it, so why not we just jump into the, the train and you know get take advantage of, of the tool. You know, it's similar to the uh, I mean, like the reference to let's let's take advantage of what's already is I mean it's already the rest of the world is is using or someone that already I mean someone else built you can just use it like you know same as Drupal eight there is a lot of third party components yeah let's let's keep moving on this and before jumping into the topics I mean just a little information about me I'm Jesus Manuel Olivas I'm a Drupal and Symphony developer. Um, I do work for Winouts, a new venture that I'm starting to with Eduardo Garcia, Enzo, and Kenny Barca. So we are starting this new company, mostly like training and consulting from I mean, D8, Drupal and, and, and Symphony. And you can find me on DO and other social networks as JMOLIBAS, or also you can use, I mean, send any message to the Winnow Twitter account or Actually, you will see me tweeting with the Drupal console Twitter handler as well. So let's, let's start with the topics. And the first one is what's Composer? You know, what's Composer? What's, what's the meaning? What's the reason of using something like this? So Composer is a dependency manager for PHP. So long story short, Composer is a tool that can help us to manage dependencies of, or of, of a project, PHP project. And this can help us to, to decide which dependencies we want to manage for a project. It also can help you to download those dependencies for us and resolving any conflict between the different dependencies we have in our project, we have defined in our project. And how Composer works. In order to work with Composer, we're required to have a file. This file is called composer.json. And this file contains all the definitions of the re and requirements of, of our project. Let's say if I want to require a module or a library, I need to define it here. I can define it within this file and specify which version I want to download. And it means I will say I will create this file. You can create this file with as many dependencies I, I require and just run one command. And automatically Composer will take care of reading that metadata, you know, the metadata of those definitions. It will take, take care of finding where those meta, um, where, where those projects are stored. So basically it goes to a place that is called packages. Package is a big repository containing all those definitions. And uh, those definitions are pointing to a repo where the source code is located. Mostly, as we can find out, is probably GitHub or for Drupal projects, is Drupal.org. So again, we define the definitions into a file. Then we run, we run a command, Composer install, 
or work from a create project. We'll see the differences of those in a few. And then Composer takes care of reading those, that metadata, asking to categories, which is the repo, where those where those where the code is, and takes care of I mean takes care of doing his best to try to resolve any conflict between those dependencies. If I have several packages at some point this this package could have as many dependencies as the packages define. So a one of our dependencies can have other dependencies, right? And maybe one of those dependencies has conflict with other dependencies that we are requiring. So composer does his best to try to fix those conflicts and provide us with the proper version that will work in for our project, that, that will best work for our project. And finally, Composer takes care of downloading those files and, and just putting it into a vendor directory. This is how the, the standard name for the directory. So we put, it, we put it there. And at the very end of the process, Composer creates a new file for us. It's called composer.log file. That composer log file contains the exact version that we are requesting to download. So it means the specific version that was downloaded in my project will be set here. So next time someone else in my team wants to get the dependencies of the project, Composer doesn't have to run any, any validation between those dependencies. You know, if those dependencies have any conflicts because that's, those are dependencies are already preset on my Composer log file. And then the rest of my team can download the exactly same versions of the dependencies that I'm that I'm using in my project, and I know that I know that works properly with my project. Okay, you can find this a uh, slide from uh, Raphael down here. So basically, I just I'm using one of his images. You can just follow this composer or right way presentation. Okay, and uh, first, probably one of the most important things, if not the most. You should always remember to always commit your Composer log file. You need to make sure you are committing this into your repo so the rest of your team can just get and can download the exactly the same version that you are downloading into your project. Okay? So remember, always commit your Composer log file. Another tool that I'll be mentioning today is Drupal Composer. Drupal Composer is a Composer template for Drupal. So basically, it's a preset composer.json file containing all of the dependencies we require to work in with GA. So basically, once you get Drupal Composer, you get Drupal, you get Drupal Console, you get all of the dependencies of those projects. You get, I mean, I mean some other packages as well. But using this project, you get a full, you download a full, fully functional D8 in project. You can find this in the link here. I will share the slides at the end so you can follow those links to, to see where the packages that I mentioned or the tools that I mentioned are located. And how do you start a new project? I mean, probably the way we've been using Drupal for a long time is just downloading Drupal, either you know going to the Drupal.org and getting the tar file, or using you know drush dl command for doing this, or maybe using Drupal console for for downloading, like you know, like something like site new project, and then takes care of getting the tar file from Drupal.org. Starting in D8, uh, my uh, suggestion is you start the project using Composer and using that create project command. So what you need to do is run Composer, the tool. Composer is a CLI tool, and create project is a command from this tool. So you run something like Composer create project, and then you pass as an argument. The template you want to download. In this case, we are seeing we have Drupal Composer. Drupal project is the base is the project that I mentioned in the previous slide. So this project already contains the definition that we want to download. And then you specify you can also specify which directory you want this to get downloaded. You can pass other flags. I mean, we don't want to worry about those. We'll talk about about those flags at the end. And finally, once the project gets downloaded into your system, you can just run run get init in order to make your project. I mean, you just create your, make your project a repo so you can manage any change, any file changes in the system that you committed to your, to your repo. As you will find out, by getting Drupal using Drupal Composer, you will get a slightly different version of the directory structure of your project. So we'll find out you have a web directory. And that web directory contains your Drupal site files. It contains the modules and core and everything else. And for I mean, and as you can see, at the same level of web, 
you will have the, the vendor directory. So it means all of your third-party third dependencies will be outside of the public web root, which is for security, is just great. So we can probably push at some point to get try to get modules and things as well outside of the web of the web public directory. But so far now we get something like this, right? And we have a or I mean a web directory who contains all of the Drupal files and then all of the vendor files or the vendor libraries or third party libraries are living outside of the public web directory. And it also contains this git ignore file for us. And as you can see here, we are ignoring the vendor directory. It means any third party dependency that we just get by using Composer, it won't get committed to our repo. Because, because there's no need to it, because we are will be using Composer to manage all those dependencies. And you can also see uh, the project is also ignoring web core. And it's also ignoring web modules contrib, themes contrib, and profiles contribs. It means any module, any country module or theme or either profile that we just get by using Composer will be stored in those directories and will be ignored for, for the repo to get committed. So, and, and this will help us, again, to, and Composer will help us to manage all those downloads for us. And we're also ignoring websites and files, and you can modify this file based on your needs, make any changes that you fit with your, with your, with your project. After getting uh, Drupal, so we need to install Drupal. So we can use probably use Drupal console, uh, the new CLI for Drupal. I'll be talking about this at 5 p.m. So if you want to know more about Drupal console, make sure you you, you see my next session at 5 or 5 p.m. Pacific time. And you, I mean, in this case, I'm running you know the site install command, passing arguments, and this will end up installing Drupal on my site. So after this, I have a fully I mean, fully functional Drupal 8 site. And a recommendation that you can follow, and I really like to do on my projects, is just get, just move that configuration, all of the the configuration files outside of the web public root. So I'm just getting off of web and just putting them in at the root of the project. So this change can help you to do that. So instead of pointing your sync directory or any of your configuration directories to you know sites in direct in sites directory in your project or sites default files. I'm just moving outside of the web uh, directory and just putting in something like config sync. And as you can see here, I am not using the hash that was automatically generated by Drupal because I mean, there's no need to, to, to do this because it's already outside of the, uh, I mean, the public web directory. Then when you, do some, when, when you do some changes, you know, like anything in your project, since we are using git, so let's, uh, let's do something like git add, and then git commit, you know, put your you know proper message and then push your code. From there, you need to create a I mean, you will probably create an app and create a, and sending a create a pull request and then someone will merge your changes. And then your repo contains, I mean, any any file, all of the files, right? So what will happen next? What will the rest of the team require to do in order to get this project? Since you already run the create project composer command. To download and already committed those into your repo. What the rest of the, th the thing can do to get all those files is used to clone the project. They don't require; they are not required to download Drupal, or they are not required to to run the create project command. They will be just cloning the, the repo, forking and cloning the repo, and run composer install command. By running composer install command, they will get all of the dependencies of the project. Remember, the vendor directory containing the part dependencies is ignored by the repo, as well as the modules and themes and profile. Well, by running Composer install, they will get all those dependencies. And I just, I mean, as a, just I mean, mentioning again what I said previously, by running Composer install, it will read your Composer log file, right? Remember, we committed our Composer log file after creating, after running create project. So Composer install will it will read this Composer log file and will get the exact same version that was downloaded on the on the previous command execution, the previous create project execution. So it means some the rest of the team, anyone within the team, will get the exact same version of those dependencies that I know that works once when I use committed. So again, remember if you if you need to 
get the dependencies by using Composer of, some, of a project that was already created, you just need to run Composer install. Now let's talk about getting modules. Before, I mean, probably, I mean on Drupal, before on Drupal, or even 8.0, the way we get modules is something like, again, brush the L or Drupal module download commands, using Drupal console commands. But now, since we are using Composer and we are making Composer or tool for managing all the dependencies, we will run Composer and other Composer command. In order to get a module, I will run Composer require. And then I will set which package that I want to download or which module I want to download. In this case, I want, I want to download the admin toolbar module. So I will, I will run Composer require Drupal admin toolbar. Then Composer, it will take care of getting this module for us, and just putting it on the, on the proper directory. So we, have to, we don't have to worry about that. And after we, we finish that, then we'll run something like Drupal module install and, and just pass the, the module name. In this case, it's admin toolbar. And this Drupal console command will take, will, will take care of installing this module into our site. And as a final step that I want you I need to do, is export the configuration, right? So I will run Drupal config export command. This will take care of exporting the configuration in the proper directory that is set in my settings file. And finally, in order to make this available for the rest of the theme, I will do the same thing, git add, commit, push, and then merge those changes. And then those files will be available to, to, I mean, to the rest of my team. How they will get the project? How the rest of the team will get those files for, for, for to working on their local environment. What they need to do is just go and fetch or merge those. I mean, give them fetch, and merge those changes. I mean, those the changes that I already sent it, and they need to run again Composer install, right? In this case, they will run Composer install, and finally, they need to import the, the configuration so they can run Drupal config import. Remember, in the previous slide, once I, after installing the module, I run Composer. I mean, sorry, config export. In this case, I'm just getting those files. Those files are already on the repo, so I just run config import, and all the files and the configuration will get imported into my site. And you know, finally, I will probably require to run cache reveal because you know Drupal 8 is so aggressive on cache. So basically, running Drupal cache reveal all or CR all, it will take care of revealing all the cache inside, and I will be ready to work. Okay, so how do I get module someone else uh, someone else download it into the to, and commit it to the repo just by running composer install okay how about updating modules let's say there's a new version of a module that I'm using in this case let's say there's a new version of admin toolbar so in order to get the latest version of the module I will run composer update command so again update is the command and then Drupal admin toolbar is the package name that I want to update, or the module in this particular case, because we're talking about Drupal. After, after updating the module, the, there's maybe a hook update pending to run, so I can run Drupal execute command in this in, in, in set, you know, admin toolbar is the module that I want to run. So, so composer update and then package name to get the module, and Drupal update execute and the module name in order to run those updates. And again, if I do some any changes, I need to do, I mean, since this is changing the, the, the repo, means what, what is this changing? So this is changing the uh, composer, JSON and composer log file again, because the version of my module, it was updated, right? So I need to, again, commit it into my repo. So add, git add, commit, push, you know, Someone else will merge. You will never, you, you never merge your all pull requests, right? Someone else merge for you. And again, how the rest of the thing get this? You know, same thing. It's just the same process. Composer install and then run Drupal update. Execute, you know, execute the, the module or execute all if you want to update any other module. Maybe you don't know which module was updated. You just can run update execute all if you want. Okay. So which advantages, advantages we have by using this versus getting Drupal in, you know, in the, I don't want to say the old way, but I mean, has, as we were doing Drupal, I was getting Drupal before. 
So we are using Composer to manage the site, right? Which is it's great, it's saving a minutes, taking care of a lot of things for us, like managing the dependencies and of our project and the dependencies of core dependencies. And it also it's um the vendor director is ignored. So all of the third party dependencies are ignored. And all of in not, not only the vendor directory, it also the modules, profiles, and things are ignored in the repo. So we are only committing the composer JSON and composer log file and using composer to download those dependencies. And what will be the benefit? I mean, again, also talking about this, if we are using a module, let's say a commerce module, that is using a third party library like address, let's say. So the composer will take care of downloading the module. And we'll also take care of down, downloading the dependencies of that module. It means even if those dependencies are not Drupal modules, Composer will take care, it will read the definition or the metadata of that module and download it that, those for you. So this is not only managing you know, the uh, module. And Composer is not only taking care of downloading modules, it's also taking care of downloading modules and the dependencies of those modules. So basically, it's managing your dependencies the dependencies of your dependencies. Which other advantage we have of this workflow? So we're using Git for coding configuration, which is, I mean, a great recommendation. I mentioned this already, but you know, modules are managed. I'm not only part also modules are managed via Composer. And uh, the config directory is outside of the project root, web root, which is safe, you can say. Now let's let's see how this happens. So how composer know about Drupal modules? It's like there is a place called packages which contains the definition of the packages. But Drupal it has a different place for doing this. But how composer knows? I mean about the modules. How the modules are registered? Or how composer knows where to get those and where to store those when downloading? How composer know that there should be a specific directory in my system? Okay. First, first every module, every contrib module. It should contain this is on a definition, right? So it, every module should contain a composer JSON file with metadata. This metadata is the module name, description, and a type. In this case, as you can see, type here is Drupal module. So this is what it tells composer. You know, this package is of type of Drupal module. In, he knows then the now composer knows this is a Drupal module. So this metadata tell composer I mean, how to how to manage this. And then our site, it's, it also contains a composer JSON file. And this file contains a repository definition. In this case, it's using packages.drupal.org slash a, which is, and this is the this is the Drupal package. Basically, this is the big rep repository of the place where all of the Drupal modules are registered in here. So this composer uses this place to find out about Drupal modules. Okay, so we have again. So we have the module has its own composer definition, but our site, in our project site, it has its own composer definition. And this definition, you don't have to add it yourself. This is already added on the on the template that we are using because I am using the Drupal, the awesome Drupal composer project. And how composer know where what's the directory where those modules should be downloaded? Okay. Remember, each module has a, each package in Composer has a definition. In this case, we are we're telling the Composer this is a Drupal module type. So we can find here within uh, our Composer definition within the Composer section, we have an installer path section. Then we're telling the Composer you know, if what you get or what you're trying to download is of type Drupal module, make sure you download and start within web modules contrib and then the package name. So it is basically, you know, get this for you and just and this is the instruction or this is the definition or the metadata that composer read to know where to store this Drupal module type or this package type. Okay. So this is all good, yeah, because you know there's there's big place where all these Drupal modules are are located and in every country module that it's in Drupal or it's there. But how about if I want to use a module that is not in Drupal.org? How about if I, if I have a module that is in GitHub and I want to include in my project? For some reason, <coughs> this module is not in Drupal.org. Maybe it's not in a beta state. Maybe I'm, someone is trying to, I'm trying to port some functionality and just 
doing the development in GitHub. We're planning, might be planning to send it back to Drupal.org once it's finished, when the DA version is finished, or maybe I just decided to use GitHub because any reason that I have, I have to, right? So what if this is happening, then how can I just let no composure? You know, composure, I want to read the module outside of, of Drupal. That is not racer in that, in that Drupal that in its place. So we can create our own packages within the composer JSON file of my site, right? So there is a section for it. I can just add this definition, you know, this, this package definition, and I'll give it a name, I give it a version, I give it a type. So I need to make sure I'm given the Drupal module type for this definition, and I just set the source and the URL, the URL of the source. So in this case, I'm pointing this to some place in GitHub, to the repo in GitHub. I'm just telling composer, you know, this is a Git repo, and then I will get this by running the same command, composer require, and just by running the name that I gave it here. You know, in this case, it's Drupal, you know, guest embed. So this is the command that I will run. Use the same require command and using the name that I just provide via the, the, the definition that I just add into my composer JSON file. So can composer help me to get modules in Drupal.org? Yes. Can composer help can help me getting modules outside of Drupal.org? Yes, it will. Let's let's now let's talk about patches. Maybe this module that I'm using and having a security issue or there's it's broken for some reason and and I find out how to fix it, create a patch, send the patch but for some reason the patch hasn't been merged. Maybe some review, you know, we all know sometimes the review process takes longer than we expected. So we have a patch and we can apply the patch. So we can probably send the patch to, to the site or just have the patch locally. And we can use Within the extra section, we have the patches section. In this section, we define, we said, we can set for packages for in, for any package within my definition. I can say I want to apply a patch. So it goes something like this: extra, then patches, then the package name or the module name in this case, and I give it a description and give it a URL to a patch. This 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 patch this patch file could be either a local file or a remote file. This could be probably Drupal.org so like something that patch or maybe it's a patch that I have locally in my system, so I can use, use both, either remote or local. But I can use this, so I can use Composer to apply patches. Because I am using, so the, this, and this is happening because the, the Drupal Composer project is using a, an external, I mean, project library who takes care of, of, of resolving and applying patches for me. Okay, now, now that I'm using Composer and taking the advantage for using Composer to get all the third-party dependencies and get modules and get the modules from Drupal.org and, you know, and modules in different places. How can I to make some of those tasks, right? Because, I mean, now we have Git and Composer and a lot of things coming, so how can I automate some of those tasks? Composer provides with some something that called scripts that we can take advantage of. Basically, we can just register to any of those events that Composer runs when and a specific moment. So let's say we have this pre-install command or post-install command or pre-update or post-update. So we can call any any shell command. In this case, I'm calling a Drupal chain chain command and just passing as a as an argument uh, a YAML file. So basically, a chain command of, of Drupal console allows you to read a YAML file. That, uh, different commands defined into a YAML file and running as a single command. So we can have something like this. At this point, you have to say dash dash file and passing the file name. And but there, there is a there is a I mean a pull request about to be merged. Then it will help you to automatically discover those chains file those chains files for you and register as commands. So you probably in a few releases don't don't we won't, won't be requiring to have the file name, it will automatically read that for you and list you any chain command as, I mean, any chain file as, as a, its own command. So we have here, right, again, getting back to what we're talking about, we are using Composer scripts to attaching a, a or own command execution to a specific event, in this case, either pre-install or post-install or pre-update or post-update. As you can see, I'm calling this pre-yml and post-yml. And what those files contain? The pre one 
So I'm, you know, before running any either install or update, I want to make sure I get a dump of the database in a, an archive of my, of my site. I can run, so basically I'm running a this chain command calling this pre.yml, and this contains the definition of two commands. In this case, database dump and the exec command that allowed you to run any any uh, any any other like shell command. So in this case, it's running database database dump and composer archive, and I'm just telling which is the directory I want to store this. Okay. And what about the post one? After you know, after any post update or it, it, it I mean it happens. So after I run after post installation, you know, after I run composer install, and once once this install finish. I will automatically can attach this config import and I'm mean, gonna update execute all just to just to avoid forgetting about running this. So it, 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 this will automatically import any configuration that is coming in the repo, and it also it will run any pending hook update that it's it's coming on on that on those new modules if there's any module that was committed on the on the composer log definition of my project. Again, so I can attach any any shell command pre or post event. Of composer and there's a plenty of events you can attach to. I'm just in this case showing you pre and post, but there, there's there's way more events you can attach to. Okay, now probably you, at this point you will be wondering, should I just run people? When should I run in composer install and composer update? So it's easy. So if you're checking out a new project, let's say someone, I mean, create there's something for you. Or you just you just I mean you use like git clone and someone else pro I mean someone else project so a project someone else I mean committed then you will run composer install and again what will composer install do it will read the composer log file it will read the definitions of those packages and just download it for you but again when you're running composer install and there is a composer log file composer do, do not require to resolve any conflicts between them because it will automatically read those those definitions for that composer log file. So if we want to grab I mean latest updates from other developers, same thing. I will run composer install because someone else already already run another command for us. And what if I want to grab the latest version for a specific dependency, right? Let's say there is a new version of module, then I will run composer update, but I, I should not run composer update without any package name because that will run update for every single package on my project. So you need to be, you need to be careful while running composer update and make sure you pass the module name or the package name that you want to update. In this case, composer update and the package name. Now let's jump into the final part, deployments. Let's say we have a project, we're using composer to manage this. How can I deploy this? I mean, you can deploy it, I mean, as you, I mean, as you can use tools that are already out there or any like platform services that are already there that you can use. But you need to make sure when deploying your project and you are using Composer, you need to run Composer install. And you can pass some flags in this case, like no progress and prefer this, and like no dev and optimize auto loader. And I will explain in a few what those what those flags mean. Okay? So remember, so when you want to deploy your I mean deploy your project, you should run Composer install. What do you com what composer install do? Then the exactly same versions define it on that composer log file. Okay? And no progress, it will I mean, omit any output, any progress output. I mean, because you, when you're deploying, you know, you maybe don't want to see that. Uh, prefer this, it means it will try it will download the uh, the package version of, of those distributions instead of instead of git, git cloning every single de dependency of your product of your project, it will get the zip or the tar distributable file for each each one of the dependencies. Mm. You should you should never deploy development packages. You know, within Composer we have two set of packages, you know. You you can require dependencies and you can require development dependencies. If you're not like Drupal Coder or any other like Devel or any other module, you should never deploy those those libraries into upstream when deploying. So when you are deploying Make sure you are using slash I mean or hyphen hyphen no dev, which is this avoid or download any the development lab, development libraries. And those development libraries are defined within the required dev section of my composer file. And finally, automize, auto, automize optimize auto loader. 
will generate the class map, the PSR for a Lorentz class map for you. Basically, a huge array containing all of the namespace definitions. But yeah, how can you run this? You can, I mean, you can again, as I mentioned before, you can use any of those platform services you want to, but if you want to, maybe, I mean, have something in your in your CLI process, you part of your workflow, you can use a tool like Deployer. Deployer is a deployment tool for PHP. It does also build in using the Symfony components and the Symfony Conf component. And how this works, it basically it's like just getting the tool, download the tool in your local system and creating a deploy.php file. And this file it should contain something like, this is the basic definition for, for a deployment. Basically, this is only inheriting that D8 recipe you can see here is requiring a you know Drupal 8.php. This is provided by the tool. This, so this is my my deployment configuration is inheriting anything provided by the tool. And in this case, I'm just setting that where the repo is. In this case, I can set any repo, putting the git, I mean the, the git repo, and I'm just telling this, what's the server name, you know, what's the the address of the server. I can use either an IP or you know, a domain name. I just give it a user to connect. Um, in this case, I'm forwarding any, any any login. It will read your, it can read your your public key in order to connect your server. You always, I mean, you, you need to make sure you are never logging into your remote server using your password. Make sure you have a passwordless configuration. And in this case, I'm setting the deploy path. So I'm just giving it this specific path. So this is the path on my server where this will deploy. And I can tell where the stage is, like the develop or production or anything I want to call. And finally, what I'm saying here, you know, after the uh, deployed command or task finish, make sure you run deploy vendor. So this will be running Composer install on the server. And by default, the deployer tool it it runs Composer, you know, install, you know, progress, and all of the uh, previous flags that I mentioned before. So it takes care of doing that. You can override those. I mean, and set any any, I mean, any flags that you want to, but you can use as default. And what would happen when you run, or how you run this, so again, you create this file in your repo, and you run it just by the tool deployer, the command is called deploy, and in this case develop, which is the stage that I want to run, and you can see something like this. It's running each one of those tasks that are already preset on the, um, on the recipe, and as you can see in the very end, it's running the deploy vendors, basically, and which is great about this tool, it will create different, I mean, it's create within the deploy path. It create um, a sim link to the current version of your deployment, and it keeps a copy of every single deployment that you previously did, previously run. So you, you can easily roll back to any of those versions if you have any problem with this. So you, you have like no down, I mean, no like downtime because you know it's like create, it do all the deployment and, find, and in the end, just do the sim link for you. But yeah, this is you can use something like this. You can actually have this within your again your CI process, I mean within your either Travis or Strider CD or any other tool that I use for running all of your CI workflow. Yet you can have this. You can either clone or or rsync or there's all different things to do. Actually, if you are using a platform that doesn't allow you to run Composer and, and you have to commit all your vendors directory in order to deploy with them. You can create a local task, like 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 sync local task with this using this tool. So you can deploy into your in a directory in your system and then you can just push that to the uh, to the to your to the platform that you use. And that and that build or that artifact will contain the vendor and the module that you are you are using because you maybe your platform is not supporting running composer install when deploying into to it. Or you can decide and choose a platform that already support running Composer. I mean, info for deployments. And quick tip for this, for speeding up Composer, and make sure you disable xdebug for, for CCLI, so in order to speed up the, I mean, the uh, running of Composer commands. And you can also install Prestissimo. It's a tool that allows you to do like parallel downloads. So when you run, when you run Composer install, and you are downloading several packages, it will trigger, I mean, like, like parallel downloads for you, so you can speed up the process of, of I mean, updates or install. 
And again, remember, you should always commit your composer log file. So that's all I have. So let's so I mean, let's have like 15 minutes for questions if there's any. If there's any, and, and I don't know who's taking care of this, maybe. Great, so we've got a question um, from Dan. Uh, he says, it's interesting to see that the Drupal project has switched over to packages.drupal.org now. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, go for it. Yeah, because before before this, before that, the, the, I mean, actually the Drupal Composer project, it has using its own, like, repo for storing, for the, uh, storing the definition of Drupal module, I mean, of the packages, but that Drupal.org is providing that now. So actually that Drupal Composer project, it was updated, you know, the template was updated to use Drupal.org instead of their own. And if you're still using the, the um, the one provided by Drupal um, project, you should you, you, need, you need to take care of and updating that soon because we'll be deprecated on January next year. And uh, Dan also asks, is packages.drupal.org also supporting uh, install profiles directly no. from Drupal.org now? Not sure about this. We can probably think, I mean, you can actually you can create your own Package that your in like your profile definition, it's it's pretty much like kind of mimic what Drupal Composer is doing. Just clone that, port down one. Just make your own changes. Just make make your own, make make your fit your needs. And you can use that as a probably as a profile thing. I'm, I'm not sure if profiles will like stay. I'm not sure if there's still a need for them since you can create your own. I mean your own package definition for it. Maybe I'm not, I hopefully see that. I mean. Profiles, I mean, I see in some profiles now changing into well, having like totally managed by composer, which is great. I totally, I mean, I see some of those kind of using, you know, composer, but it also contains some modules. So it's like probably that won't be the way to go. I mean, if you are using composer, it would be great to like, you know, use like composer as a tool. And uh, do you have any advice for projects that need to upgrade from packages? Two packages. .org. There, there's this, I mean, there's a small change on the version numbers. I mean, I don't remember the top of my head now, but I can, we can, I mean, we can probably find out and just, I mean, I mean, tweet about it or have, I mean, try that on the slides later on. But yeah, there is a, a light change on the version because we have like you know, eight that eight hyphen something something. So start. I mean, I think you get rid of, you should get rid of the eight now since. Drupal is moving into like semantic version, so this, and you will be using only the version name, which is in this case like three or four or something. And if there's no like any uh, with something instead of having a three, a hyphen three hyphen something, it should be like three hyphen something. That's 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 probably the change. How I would call in my head that what you need to do, but you need to make sure you you can just you do that before the end of the year because I mean, that will be deprecated and you don't want to use a deprecated package. Okay, a question from Suzanne. Can I update Drupal core with Composer? Yeah, if you are using uh, the, uh, again, the awesome Drupal Composer, yes, you run Composer update Drupal core. Cool. Um, question from Conrad. Uh, I'm using VirtualBox and Docker to run Drupal 8. And if I run composer require module, it ends up being extremely slow. Uh, is that a bug you've come across? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, unfortunately, composer is not the, fat, the fast, fastest tool in the world. And, uh, and you know, I have, I have seen that. I mean, recommendation, you know, make sure you, you disable um, xdebug from the CLI. And you can install, try installing this uh, Prestissimo tool. And actually, there's a, I mean, there's a great blog post about Composer speed and download, and you know, several like, like I mean, uh, attempts to, to make it faster from the guy who creates Rubble VM. You can search for that. Uh, Jeff Gerling, if I don't, I might be, I mean, not pronouncing properly, Jeff Gerling. Yeah, you think you got Drupal, the guy who created uh, Drupal VM. You can find you can find look for his uh, blog, and you you can find that a blog post about 
the speed and how to improve. And you can see, you know, different, I mean, compares between running with, you know, with, I mean, Xdebug enable or disable, and, you know, this first decimal tool and without the tool. And you can see, I mean, how, and in the end, you can see the recommendation and what it's suggesting you to do. And if you are using Drupal VM, you are, then, then you are, you can just configure. I don't recall, I mean, the top of my head, if it's already by default, but I, I remember I saw some pull requests coming to to use or make make sure you can use Drupal VM and Composer instead of Drush of Drushman. Okay, a question from Ed: uh, Is there any way you can integrate tests during the update process? Uh, I was thinking about something like PHP CS uh, hyphen hyphen standard equals Drupal. Yeah, you can. You, I mean, you can. You can attach those to the uh, scripts. You know, the composer scripts. You know, while running, while running, you know, the uh, the uh, app there or something. I mean, but I probably, I rather probably don't run it here. I would probably have something like Travis run it for me instead, and make sure Travis is the one running. You know, when someone sends a pull request. Then Travis will take care of running all those, you know, like like code sniffer and any, you know, like PHP Uni. There any other like test tool that I want to use, and uh, and that will be that that will be the place where I should be. I mean, having this running this tools on my on my workflow, but you can you can do that. You can you can run those within um, Composer post scripts, but I mean I won't do it. I will probably do that on the on the. Travis, I mean, on the, uh, with the, I mean, using the ACI tool like the Travis or Jenkins or Strider, as I mentioned before, and that will be better because if you run it through Composer, you might be, or through a Git hook, I mean, definition, you might be probably stopping people from contributing work because they won't be able to run, make it run or work. So it will be better to have those running by Travis, and then when they send a pull request, they can see, you know. Travis or at the end Strider or any of the tool that you use, it will run those for you and will like, run any, any, I mean, any, make sure it will check like standard, putting standards and, and running tests. And if something fails, it will like trigger a message. And then then you can just probably use that, you know, that you can, over, or you can actually configure to create a, you can probably create a pull request if this, if this can be fixed or you can do anything that you want to with it right here. Okay, question from a comrade. Uh, I ran the Composer require Drupal paragraphs, and Composer downloaded and installed a lot of other dependencies. Uh, why does Composer download and install these other dependencies when I just specified to require one? It's probably because the dependency that you are requiring has some other dependencies. You know, might be I know paragraph requires the um, this. Um, um, entity reference uh, revision module. So if your package or the package you're trying to download contains any other dependencies, Composer will take care of resolving any de any any of those dependencies for you. So you're just installing one package, but this package depends on other three packages. Composer will take care of downloading the four of them for you. It's same for, for maybe you run Composer update and then this update is the new version of the package that you're updating. It requires a new version of their dependencies. So that's what is happening. A uh, question from Ed. Would you recommend Travis over CircleCI or Jenkins? This is up to you. I mean, there's different tools for different like, features. You can go with any of those. I really love to. I really love to. I mean, I like to use a Strider, called Strider CD as well. It just depends on you or your client or the project, or maybe it's not, it's not an open source project, and you can probably just set Jenkins if you want to. I mean, it's it's just up to you. And all the tools works have their own like you know glitches in here and there and work. Some of those are free. Some of those are paid. I mean. There are plenty of those. Uh, okay, from Nia, do you have more examples of deployer recipe, de I guess deployment recipes for Drupal sites? Well, yeah, not in this, not in this is light, but I do have some of those. Actually, have some, have some, some of those 
run by Travis. So I will try to turn this into a blog post probably in a week or two from now. Okay. And you know, adding more stuff to it so you can you know see and take more ideas on how to do this. Uh, question from Robert. When sharing the composer lock file with a team, does it ever happen that a package is no longer available? And if so, how is that resolved? If a package is no longer, yeah, like the <laughs> like the JavaScript thing, you know, like the left back, yeah. Well, what it happens is composer will tell you there's not able to download any specific package because it's broken, and you will require require to run something like like composer remove and the package name, and just get another package that replaces that functionality on your side. Okay, cool. I tell you the package was not, we were not able to find the package. The same, same thing when you're trying to apply a patch and the, and the and it does not apply, it tells you my patch was not applied and blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's pretty verbose. Okay, great. Uh, do we have any more questions for Jesus Manuel? Okay, well, um, wonderful. Thank you so much, Jesus Manuel. Um, we are actually going to have you back in a couple of hours, right? Yeah, uh, in two hours from now, I will talk about Drupal console. So if you see some something say Drupal and running a command, so I will talking about that. Drupal console, yeah, it's like, I'm sorry, I mean, like, you know, it's a Drupal, it's a Drupal CLI, it's a new Drupal CLI built on top of Symfony components. And I will be talking about it. And as well, I'll be sharing my slides in a few minutes. To, I mean, using my Twitter account. So if you want to want to have those, make sure you are I mean, attend that. I mean, make sure I mean, you taking a look at Twitter. And I will tag as Drupal A Day, so you can find it easily. Well, wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. Now, thank you for the invitation, and again, thank you for organizing this awesome event. And thank you Great. everyone for attending. Wonderful. Uh, thank you for attending, everyone, and uh, we hope to see you at one of the uh, final four sessions we have lined up for Drupal 8 Day.